Rob's Child. Nothing I say is investment advice. Welcome to the show where we view financial markets through crystal ball gazing. J.P. Morgan once said, Millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do. And so we begin. Today is Monday, April 1st, 2024. Most not notable data actually came out on Friday when markets were closed. PCE data coming out and personal income and personal spending. So the PCE data came in as expected. Nothing really to write home about, but the personal income seemed to be a little bit hot. Uh, rather, the personal spending uh, was hot. So the last being 0.2% and the expected 0.5% actual 0.8%. So going up more than expected. And then personal income going up, but actually less than expected. You know, from what I've been listening to uh, with, from what I've been listening to with people uh, talking about this, it made it sound like it was some very hot information. I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing the heat here. It seems overall things are just sort of as expected. I think notably a few things from Gareth Solway's show Verified Investing and some other sources that I get from, you know, we're at the end of a quarter and there can be a lot of moving of money and so things can be kind of crazy on a day like today. He mentioned as well a uh, three-day weekend adding to the chaos a little bit. Uh, so that's why we saw some some craziness in markets to some degree. Uh, but I'll go through those charts. I'm not sure if anything uh, we had some big movements, but I feel like they're the kinds of movements that could easily reverse back tomorrow, with some exceptions. The main exception that I think is important to take a look at is the U.S. dollar. Uh, you know, this had been going sideways for a while. We saw a sizable pop today, going up to almost 105, and, you know... When we, when people are worried about inflation, you know, one of the things that can happen to the dollar is it can actually get weaker because it has less purchasing power and therefore it can go down, but it's going up. And so, you know, that's a sign of weakness foreseen in equity markets in the value of stocks right now. Uh, let's keep going through the charts. You know, we can see this in SPY, in the S&P 500. You know, we didn't see it so much in gold. I don't even have that chart up. Uh, it's the Gold is just, to me, it's overpriced. Everybody seems excited about it. I'm not excited about it. I, you know, gold, it, it's... It's nominal price is too high for me to get excited about it. You know, unless something is clearly cheap, why would I be interested? If it's at an all-time high, I mean, yeah, there is some to there is some to be said about, you know, go with the trend. The trend's your friend. The trend's your friend until the end. Uh, I think we're closer to the end than most other people out there, but I don't like that game either. You know, I'd rather play the game of finding something that is clearly undervalued, you know, than, than doing the opposite. On to yields, the 30-year treasury yield, which I think is the most important one to be looking at. You know, you have some very, like, sturdy-looking trend lines that go back quite a ways, right? Like this one... We've hit it so many times, and now it's acting as resistance on the yields. And this is clearly on the yields looking like a bear flag. And I, I've been saying how this sort of resembles a head and shoulders, and I was thinking this would break down. Uh, actually, you can see, do I have that chart? Yeah, so this is the yields chart. No, this is TLT. So I was expecting yields to drop down, and therefore this playing out to break out higher. But as you can see, this red candle here really broke that pattern. We just touched that 
trend line on Thursday, and I was thinking that today, oh, well, this might be it. We might, this might be the big breakout, and the absolute opposite happened. That it absolutely cracked. You know, I see this as perhaps a blow off bottom or you know blow off top and yields but we'll we'll see how it plays out you know looking at the different charts in different ways can give you an interesting perspective you know uh, on the yields anyway you know this can easily be seen as a bear flag the pole being down to here and an obvious Oops, sorry pretty obvious uh, flag pattern right here and then looking at TLT another way of looking at the the trend lines is you know that this is it almost looks like a wedge here where we have the top going lower and lower and lower and the bottom is sort of closing in here you know the last two bottoms if we have that act as a trend line we're, we're actually bumping on that today and so we'll see if this turns out to be the end of uh, consolidation before again it seems most likely in my view to break out higher TLT is anyway just because it's a pretty clear uh, flag pattern here but we'll see how that goes other notable charts I wanted to bring up uh, EWZ just because we keep bumping along on this trend line you know if it breaks down from here you know that might be bad for the people that have been looking at this ultra long trend line back from 2010 that we've hit 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 and then finally broke out the hope is that this acts as support and that this uh this longer term trend turns into you know a giant wedge that uh, breaks out higher we'll see how this goes it's a little nerve-wracking for myself. I have 10% of my portfolio in Brazil, but you know, if I'm going to be, I, I'm mostly cash and bonds, and I mean, you know, it's not. I I've come across the advice. I think Graham actually himself wrote this somewhere. I didn't. It's not in security analysis, but I thought it came from him. I remember reading about saying how, at any given time, you shouldn't be more than seventy-five percent stocks or less than twenty-five percent stocks. And so I'm trying to sort of do that. I'm trying to stay invested in being long in what I think are undervalued areas with about. 20% and and uh, 25% Brazil is part of that because it's still pattern wise, crystal ball wise, PE ratio wise. It just seems like as far as stocks go, one of the uh, better places to be in in my opinion. Again, I don't have any crystal. I do have a crystal. I'm the guy with the crystal ball. Last chart, uranium. I have been talking about how this had been looking like head and shoulders to me and I was hoping that it would break down so I could buy back into it at a lower price you know I think it may have gotten ahead of itself you know going up so quickly in price uh, recently but you know this is a very spe it's a speculation really it's a speculative market but we did we did see a pop in it today I think this is likely to be a blow off top more than anything perhaps coinciding with a potential top in oil which uh, Gareth Soloway talks about in his show uh, a great uh, soothsayer of markets with his patterns and so that's really all I have for you for today you know market data there's not a whole lot of like groundbreaking things that'll come out but if if anything shocking comes out i'll be talking about it on these uh shows you know the adp employment job you know job openings there's some some things that could potentially be somewhat interesting but we'll see you know the most interesting thing will really be tomorrow right so it's the second day of the quarter it's the day after the day after the weekend so you know everybody that put in their orders over the weekend uh, and then the markets reacted now now it's like it's been digested now we see what comes out for the rest of the week we see where things really are gonna go 
So tomorrow should be one of the more interesting days as far as uh, chart charts go. And that's it. That's all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and thank you very much for watching Rob's Child.